Hello, and welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of December 27th, 2020. I apologize for this late start. Of course, I usually have a bit of late starts, but this time I've actually had to reset my whole computer because it crashed yesterday after I broadcasted my last broadcast to YouTube. So, sorry about this. Today we find out a federal judge said that Justice, the Justice Department unlawfully rescheduled the execution of the only women on federal death row, potentially setting up a Trump administration to schedule the execution after the president-elect Joe Biden gets put into office. And the federal investigations have identified a person of interest in connection with the explosions that rocked downtown Nashville on Christmas Day and were searching a home associated with said person. And then a federal judge in Texas is set to review the legality of the deportation reform program of hundreds of thousands of young undocumented adults known as dreamers because they are dreaming to become United States citizens. And you know what? At this present time, I don't blame them for wanting to become United States citizens because most other countries are not really that good. Um, just This is all just weeks before President like Joe Biden takes office. And then according to the Texas Tribune, outgoing Speaker of the Texas House of Representatives, Dennis Bonin, Republican, has tested positive for COVID-19. And sorry about that. Um, and when people would be affected by the lapse of, uh, let's put this way, I mean, right now we're waiting for Donald Trump to sign the um, stimulus package order. And from everything I've found out, he actually has signed it. Uh, let's see if I can actually find it here for you. But this says that he, he actually plans to sign. He actually plans to sign this tonight in order of. Uh, in fact, this is from 59 minutes ago, so I'll give you a good update. So in case you guys don't have a good internet connection, I can give it to you. I can at least relay good information for you guys. But let's see here. President Donald Trump signed the 900 billion dollar pandemic relief package Sunday ending days of drama over his refusal to accept the bipartisan deal that will deliver long-sought cash for businesses and individuals and avert a federal government shutdown. The massive bill includes $1.4 trillion to fund government agencies through September and contains another end-of-session priorities such as money for cash-starving transit systems and an increase of food stamp benefits. That's a good thing. We need people need food stamps so they can eat and survive. We also need housing as well. Trump announced the signing of a statement Sunday night that spoke of his frustrations with the COVID nineteen relief for including only six hundred dollars checks to most Americans as if two thousand dollars. That has fellow Republicans rejected. He also complained about what he considered unnecessary spending by the government at the largest government at large, sorry, but Trump's 11th hour objection created turmoil because lawmakers had thought he was supportive of the bill, which had been negotiated for months in, with the White House's input. And it, I will sign the, ob the omnibus and COVID package with a strong message that makes clear to Congress that wasteful items need to be removed, Trump said in, a, in his statement. While the president insists he would send the Congress a red line version with items to be removed under the recessions process, these are merely suggestions to Congress. The bill is signed, would not be necessary to be changed. So basically they're saying that once he signs this bill, Congress can say, you know what, Mr. Uh, President Trump, we're not gonna make any changes to the bill, so you guys can basically just screw yourself. Lawmakers now have breathing room to continue debating whether the relief check should be large, as the president has demanded. The Democrats, the Democratic lead House supports the larger checks and is set to vote on the issue Monday, but is expected to be ignored by the Republicans held Republican Hill Senate, where the spending faces opposition.
In other words, basically, the Senate is basically tell us that we're screwed. We're getting six hundred bucks, not two thousand dollars, because, like I said, all they care about is the money in their pockets, not the money going out to people so they can survive and live. This has been a proven fact for the past several months. By Mitch McConnell always turning out those skinny bills for half a billion dollars, sorry, half a trillion dollars, and cutting the people out of the, out of the check. Republicans and Democrats swiftly became Trump's decision to uh, welcome Trump's decision to sign the bill into law. The compromise bill is not perfect, but it will do an enormous amount of good for struggling Kentuckians and Americans across the country who need help now," says Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. As you can see, Mitch McConnell only cares about Kentuckians first, because and then American people. Well, aren't isn't Kentucky a part of the United States? It's also known Kentucky is also known as the taken state. In other words, they like to be taken a lot and not give nothing back. That's why he got reelected because Mitch McConnell likes to take a lot and give nothing back. Hence, the fact his wife has uh, basically illegally funnel, funneled millions of dollars worth of PPP money from the CARES Act into her own personal bank account. And I thank the president for signing the relief bill into law. Democrats are proposing more aid to come once President-elect Joe Biden takes office, but Republicans are signaling a wait-and-see approach. Isn't that just nice? They just want to wait and see. We're supposed to be entering the darkest hours of the pandemic because it's wintertime where the pandemic is going to thrive even more. And with the supposable new strain of COVID-19 out there, it's going to only get worse. And Republicans want to wait and see. This is what they did last time. They waited and see and, and waited to see what was going to happen. And look what's happened. We have over 300 million Americans dying because of their wait and see app, uh, attitude. Whereas Democrats was ready to hop out there and get the Heroes Act out there to help out the American people as well as the central workers. And then they had to revise it over and over and over again. Now to this whole bipartisan deal that's only not even trillion dollars worth of money. In fact, there's not even, I think there's like less than $340 billion of new money in this $900 billion act. I mean, if they actually increase it to, it to $2,000, like I said, it does, it's only cost like five hundred and I think $65 billion. Well, they already got the 900, the um, 116 billion, I think, no, 160 billion dollars in there. All they have to do is include another 400 billion dollars in there to get the American people a two thousand dollar check. But that's with a 16 percent um, taken out of it because I'm figuring 16 percent that covers all the wealthy people and people uh, that are above a certain um, earning cap, as well as the inmates in prison, because I actually hate to say this, I don't think the inmates in prison really deserve a stimulus check. I mean, they put themselves in prison and we're already paying for them, so why should they get money back to help us continue to pay for them? They should go to the prison guard, the prison itself, to keep them afloat, to keep the prisoners alive. They shouldn't go directly to prisoners at all. Democrats are promising more aid to come once President like Joe Biden takes office, but the Republicans are excited they're waiting for the wait and see approach. In the face of a growing economic hardship, spreading disease, and a looming shutdown, lawmakers on Sunday has urged Donald Trump to um, sign the legislation immediately, which apparently he has. Currently, they say he has signed the legislation immediately to aid unemployment benefits and relief payments to families. Money for vaccine distribution, businesses, cash starving, public transit systems, and more on the line. Protections against evictions also hang in the balance. So basically, what we're waiting for him, we're waiting for all this stuff to happen so the, um, there's no evictions, at least not until January 31st, because that's how long the eviction protection is supposed to last. Extended unemployment for 10, I think 10 or 11 weeks at $300 a week, which gives the unemployed to actually need it. A stimulus check for everyone that needs it. I'm sure they still. I, I'm not sure if they've actually changed the um, cap on it, but from last I heard, it was supposed to be the cap from the CARES Act of seventy five thousand dollars for um, individuals, hundred fifty thousand dollars for married couples uh, to get the full amount. 
I mean, they might have changed it. I haven't read a whole lot on this so far yet because Donald Trump just barely sent the bill. So hopefully we'll come out to the public and we'll find out exactly what's in this and how it's going to help the people out. But let's just say this way. We, we have Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. He said he understood that Trump wants to be remembered for advocating a big check. But the danger is that he is uh, remembered for the chaos and misery and erotic behavior of if he allowed this to expire. As I put in my other videos, this whole thing is about Trump's ego. It's not about the people. Trump doesn't care about the people. He cares about making himself look good, even if he's a villain. And most of these senders have actually realized that, and that's why they've either decided to switch teams and stop being Republican and become an independent, or they have retired. And that is why, if you remember earlier on in the year, when elections, before elections started happening, Trump called on the Proud Boys and told them to stand by. The Proud Boys and Antifa are basically along the same lines. They are uh, eco-terrorists. The Proud Boys are political violence groups that are in the United States and Canada, and basically Antifa is an eco-terrorist group. And Trump denounced Antifa, but not the Proud Boys. And the Proud Boys is a all-male group. I don't know why people would actually want to be associated with, it, with excuse me, the Proud Boys, but I don't. There's no point of dying for one man because he lost elections. That's not right. But before I continue on and ramble on, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I will broadcast again to you guys tomorrow when I have more information. And hopefully I get a lot of great information to give you guys about what's in this stimulus package for you to help you guys survive until another one is passed. Until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening, and I will speak again to you tomorrow.